Okay, so um, everything that we've done before with equations is still pretty much going to hold true. I mean, an equation is a true statement that says one side is, is the same as the other side. And you find this value for x that makes the statement true. And that's still what we're doing. Um, so all the steps that you used to do in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 are all going to be the same uh, until we get to the end. So you can almost think, just treat the sine x like it were a regular x. If you were to pretend this was 2x minus 1 equals 0, what you would do is you would add 1 and um, divide by 2. And you would have sine x is equal to 1 half. Um, what we do from here, though, is where it all becomes different. So we need to know what value of x makes this true, um, what angle, because the sine is always of an angle, what angle has a sine of one half? Remember that sine, when you're talking on the unit circle, is the y coordinate. So what angle has a y coordinate of one half? And for that information, we need to kick it over to the unit circle. Um, so looking, scanning the unit circle for one half. And he says it's pi, it's pi over six. Um, scanning for one half. Five pi over six. And these are negative one half. So um, we have five pi over six and we have pi over six. So do you see why those are what we're looking for? Yes, we're good. Okay, so uh, we have our solutions are pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So x could be 5 pi over 6 or x could be pi over 6. Um, now one little catch to that is that those aren't the only two solutions. Um, an example of another solution would be 13 pi over 6. Right, here's pi over 6 go around the circle, there's 12 pi over 6, 13 pi over 6. It's coterminal with pi over 6. And we could keep going. We could keep going around, go around the circle twice and end up, go around the circle 10 times and end up on pi over 6 and you've got a solution. So there's infinite solutions and it would take us a long time to write all those down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say it's 5 pi over 6 and any integer multiple of 2 pi because 2 pi is one entire trip around the circle. Right? It's pi over 6 plus any mul integer multiple of 2 pi. So that accounts for all the infinite solutions that, that we could get here. Right? And today, um, we're just going to do a bunch of these things until we reach uh, a level of comfort. Okay. So I brought up another one. Um, did I totally not write sine? Um, sine x plus the square root of 2 equals negative sine x. If you were to treat these like they were just plain old x's, hopefully you would say, hey, I've got to combine like terms. Maybe even Amelia will say that somewhere over there about combining like terms. Because that's the first thing that we need, there she goes, that's the first thing that we need to do is we need to combine like terms. <laughs> so um, when you do that, you pile up all the x's together and you pile up all the, the numbers together. Um, so if I add sine to both sides, I would get 2 sine x, and if I subtracted the square root of 2 to move it to the right, I have it equal to negative square root of 2. And if that were a plain old x, you would now divide by 2. So we have sine x is negative square root of 2 over 2. Whoa. Emilia erased something. That said 2 sine x <laughs> equals negative square root of 2. We'll figure this out as we go. 
Okay, so the question is, uh, what angle has a y-coordinate of negative square root of 2 over 2? And we need to consult the great circle. A y-coordinate of negative square root of 2 over 2. 5 pi over 4 does it. 7 pi over 4 does it. So we have two solutions, 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So it could be 5 pi over 4 plus any number of trips around the circle, and it could be 7 pi over 4 plus any number of trips around the circle. So things are going good, right? We're feeling pretty comfortable. And then I put something like that up. Okay, there are going to be two things <coughs> that are um, very different from what we just did with sine, and that's because we have the tangent in there. Um, but to start with, let's treat it like it was an x, and, and let's do what we would normally do. And hopefully, uh, when you see a squared term in an equation, uh, you think of three possibilities. One, we can isolate it and extract a square root. Two, we can factor it. Or three, we can use a quadratic formula. Um, because there's just one term of x, there's not tangent squared x plus tangent x, we can isolate this here and we can extract square roots. Add 1 and divide by 3 and I have tangent squared x equals 1 third. And what you would normally do is take the square root of both sides. So we have tangent of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 third. Remember, back in the day, when you first did these in Algebra 1, you probably always forgot to write plus or minus. Um, whenever, you whenever you take square root of both sides, you've got a plus or minus in it. Um, this would be a little neater if we simplified it just a little bit. So I'm going to call it plus or minus 1 over the square root of 3, because the square root of 1 is just 1. So, <coughs> what angle has a tangent of positive or negative 1 over the square root of 3. A little bit of reminder about tangents. The tangent is the sine over cosine, right? The sine is your y-coordinate. Your cosine is your x-coordinate. So the question becomes, what angle on the unit circle when you divide the y-coordinate by the x-coordinate gives you 1 over the square root of 3, or negative 1 over the square root of 3. So we have to consult the circle. <coughs> and let's take a guess. And let me restrict where we can guess from. Um, B We didn't talk a lot about tangents and cosecants and secants when we sketched graphs. Um, so, but we did take note of what the periods were, and hopefully you have them down on your formula sheet somewhere. Uh, the period of tangent is pi. So we're looking in the interval from 0 to pi for this, for, for this to happen. So 7 pi over 6 would be outside of this interval. So we're looking in the top half of the circle for a y-coordinate divided by an x-coordinate that gives us 1 over the square root of 3. Let's try pi over 3. Okay, so I'm going to go off to the side here, and I'm going to say, uh, let's look at uh, pi over 3. Okay, at pi over 3, we have a y-coordinate of the square root of 3 over 2, and an x-coordinate of 1 half. So when I flip and multiply, let me just uh, do that like this. What I have is 2's cancel and I have the square root of 3. 
So that is not what we want. So it's not going to be chi over 3. It's going to be something else. <coughs> How about pi over 6? It's, it's one of the only other choices with a square root of 3 in it. Um, so let's see. Pi over 6, we have a y coordinate of, was it 1 half? Yes, 1 half, and an x coordinate of the square root of 3 over 2. And if I flip and multiply, the 2's cancel and I get 1 over the square root of 3. So pi over 6. and any number of pi's, because its period is pi, is going to be a solution. Um, let's check for more. Remember the other thing it could be is negative 1 over square root of 3. So if you jump over here to 5 pi over 6, you have the same coordinates, you just have a difference in sign. So that's going to work out for 5 pi over 6 as well. If you want to save yourself some time in the future, each time you're forced to uh, find a tangent, you might want to add that to the edge of the unit circle. So um, you might want to add that the tangent of pi over 3, you might want to make a note of that, that it's the square root of 3, and that 5 pi over 6 is negative 1 over the square root of 3, and that pi over 6 is 1 over the square root of 3. It could save you from doing this little multiplication thing over again. That wasn't so bad, though. Um, Gary says, let's crank it up a little bit. All right, Gary, there it is. It's cranked up. We've got cotangents and cosines in there. They're all mixed around. Uh, and that cosine is a squared. So when you see a squared term in an equation, you think, uh, can I extract a square root? Can I factor? Am I forced to do the quadratic formula? So let's look at this. Um, as a factoring problem. And the reason I'm, uh, I would think that is I see a cotangent here and I see another cotangent there. There's two terms with the, with the cotangent in it. We can pull it out. So let's bring it all the same side. So if we bring it all over, I get this minus cotangent x. And if I take out what's common, I'm left with cosine squared minus 2. Hmm. You remember where this goes? Huh? We did. No, it won't go there. Unless you want to introduce square roots, and I don't want to do that. Where do you normally go after you factor a quadratic? What do you do with a factor? Amelia, what do you do with a factor? In algebra 2 and algebra 1, if you had x times x squared minus 2, what would you do with each little factor there? use a quadratic equation, a quadratic formula? There's an easier way. Um, you make use of the zero product property. I can't believe you all don't remember this. Um, zero product property states that if you multiply two things together and get zero, one of those two things has to be zero. So you take each factor 
and make a little mini equation and set it equal to zero. You've never done that before? We did that at the beginning of this year. Yeah. Um, so we have two little mini equations. Okay, so in one equation, what angle has a cotangent of zero? Let me come off to the side here and say that cotangent is the cosine over the sine, and on the unit circle, that's your x coordinate divided by your y. So on the unit circle, from zero to pi, where do we have an angle where x divided by y is zero? In case you're wondering, yes, it really is that obvious. Is it pi over what? Four? That'd be one. Square two divided by two. Square two over two divided by itself would be one. Pi. Um, yeah. It's the x divided by the y. Is it pi over 2? Yeah, 0 divided by 1 is 0. So we have pi over 2. It's, it's 0 is the x coordinate. 0 divided by 1 is just 0. Yeah. Yeah. The x is 0. And y is 1. Which is zero. Yeah. Isn't that illegal no, one divided by zero would be illegal. It's undefined. That's why pi. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this guy over here, we're going to do what we did with the last problem. We have cosine squared of x equals positive two, and we're going to extract the square roots, and we get the cosine is plus or minus the square root of two. Um, take a look at your unit circle. Where on your unit circle do you see the square root of 2? Nowhere says Erica. Um, the square root of 2 is bigger than 1, right? And 1 is the limit on the unit circle. It only goes as high or as low as 1 or negative 1, left, right, 1, negative 1. So, um, the square root of 2 is outside the range of cosine. So our only solution is this one right here. Three left. Looking at this one, something should really jump out and hit you in the face. Quadratic. And when you have a quadratic, you hope that it factors. Um, because if not, you have to do the quadratic formula. So that's a trinomial. So as a little factoring reminder, that's two sets of parentheses. The factors of 2 sine squared would be 2 sine and sine. The factors of 1 would be 1 and 1. The last sign is negative, so that means you're going to take a difference to get your middle term. And this, the, uh, you're going to have 1 plus and 1 minus. So uh, let's see, looking ahead a little bit, I think I want the minus here and the plus here. Let's check it out. Outers would be negative 2 sign. Inners would be 1 sign. Add them together, you get negative 1 sign. So it does factor. And with each little factor, you make a mini equation and let's see so this one we have sine negative one half and this one sine x is equal to one so we gotta search the unit circle 
for y coordinates of one half and one. Negative one half, yeah. Negative one half and one. Where does that happen on the unit circle? Y coordinate with a negative one half. It happens at seven pi over six. It happens at eleven pi over six. And at zero, it's oops. Looking for one, sorry. I got them backwards. And at pi over two, the y coordinate is one. So we have pi over two, seven pi and eleven pi over six. Pi over two. 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. Because the, the period is pi, is 2 pi. And n means for any multiple. So if n was just 1, you would have one a additional trip around the circle. If n was 2, 2 times 2 would be 4, that would be 2, 2 ties around the circle and then so on. Can we make it any more fun than that? Yes. We can totally make it more fun than that. We can mix up our sines and cosines. Wouldn't that be a blast? And you thought you were done with all those identities and, and stuff. But you're not. Okay, so we got sines, we got cosines. The sine is squared, so that looks really quadratic, doesn't it? But there's a cosine in the middle, so we're not going to be able to factor it like we would a normal trinomial. If you think way back to episode one, the bottom half of that worksheet said express one function in terms of another, like express sine x in terms of only cosine. Um, that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to make it uniform and, and replace. Um, so because I see that sine squared, I'm going to replace that. And if you look on your formula sheet, you'll see that sine squared is 1 minus cosines. Hmm. What do you think, Sarah? Take a guess. Where do we go from here? Just a wild guess. Huh? What'd she say, Mason? Just insert the correct answer and tell me that's what she said. <laughs> What'd she say? <laughs> Simplified. And by what? Heck yeah, let's distribute. So we got 2 minus 2 cosine squared x plus 3. That's a 3. 3 cosine x minus 3 equals 0. Yeah, you, when you look at that step up there, you know it's quadratic because you see the cosine squared, but it doesn't look like a normal quadratic, so you just expand. Expand everything and then, and then sort out the pieces. So let's see, if we sort out the pieces here, we've got a negative 2 cosine squared x. Uh, we have a positive 3 cosine x. We have a negative one. It's starting to look like something we can factor. We don't like factoring with that negative sign in front. So uh, if we multiply the entire equation by negative one, that has the effect of changing all the signs. And now that looks like something we can factor. 
the, the, the second sign's a plus, so that means we're going to take a sum of the outer and inners to get negative 3 cosine. Both signs are going to be negative. So we have a 2 cosine x minus 1 times cosine x minus 1. Let's double check. The outer's negative 2 cosine. The inner's negative 1 cosine. Add them together. Negative 3 cosine. So this all boils down to um, two rather comparatively simple questions. Um, what angle has a cosine of one half and what angle has a cosine of one? What about pi? Oh, you said pi over three. Pi over three has a cosine of one half. Any other cosines of one half? Yeah, five pi over three. So we have pi over three and five pi over three. Let me write those down. Pi over three, five pi over three. Now, where can we find a cosine, an angle that has a cosine of one? Zero. Z yeah. Zero and all those infinite multiple trips around. Uh, that could be better said as just plain old 2 n pi. Isn't that impressive? Makes you feel like you did something. Right? Last one. These are the ones I like, but everybody else hates. Oops. <laughs> Cosine plus one. <laughs> the reason that I like them and everybody seems to hate them is um, it's one of those mathematical sort of moments where you decide to do something that's totally non obvious um, in order to manipulate this to get something you can work with. Uh, we can't do a very easy replacement because these are both to the first power so we can't use a Pythagorean identity. Sine and cosine are mixed together. Um, there's no way to pile that up and factor it. We're just kind of stuck. Uh, what I see here though is that if if that were sine squared of x we could do some things, namely replace it with cosine squared, um, and then maybe do what we did in this last problem. Well, there is a way to turn sine into sine squared. Isn't there, Erica? How would you do that? I mean, how do you turn sine into sine squared? Square it? Yeah, Gary says square it. Exactly. Um, you can do anything you want to do as long as you do it to both sides of the equation. So we're going to have to square both sides. And we're doing this because we see that if we manipulated it in this fashion that we would be able to make a replacement via the Pythagorean identity. Now on the left you have to be very careful because you'll be tempted to distribute a power and I finally lost patience with seeing that kind of mistake and remember that's a, that's a huge deduction of two percentage points. So you don't ever want to do that. Um, so you want to be very careful and either write it down twice and foil it or finally learn the shortcut. Um, and that is uh, square the first term twice the product square the last term. And on this side, instead of sine squared, we're going to call it 1 minus cosine squared. So we've got to pile everything up.
if we add cosine squared to both sides, we have two cosine squared uh, plus two cosine. And if we subtract one from both sides, you have zero. And hopefully you look at that and you say, hey, there's something common. And that common thing happens to be a two and a cosine. So if I factor that out, um, I'm left with a cosine here and I'm left with one there. Don't forget the one because that is probably the next thing that's going to go on my loss of patience list. Um, so we have our two little equations. Uh, what we need to know is when does the cosine equal zero and when is the cosine negative one? Great circle of life. The cosine is zero twice. The x coordinate is zero here at pi over two. The x coordinate is zero down there at three pi over two. So we have pi over two and we have three pi over two. Oh, wait. Uh, no. Not right now. Um, when is the cosine negative 1? Cosine, when is the x coordinate negative 1? x coordinate is negative 1 over here at pi. And that's beautiful stuff, isn't it? Isn't that just beautiful? On 482. You're going to want to handle 11.20 to 20 tonight, uh, especially for some kind of quiz or something tomorrow. You want to be able to rattle it off, um, just in case. And we're going to go on from there, so we're going to do be doing more of these tomorrow.